So welcome everyone. This um, talk today is on S-Frame, the simple frame stack trace format. My name is Indu Bhagat. I am a member of the Linux Toolchains team at Oracle. So today we're going to talk about stack traces. In general, many things about stack traces. What is a stack trace? What are the current methods of generating stack traces? What are the challenges of um, each of these methods that we have for generating stack traces? Uh, what is S-Frame format then? And uh, what impact can it make? Um, specifically, I want to steer at some point towards the direction of how is it that S-Frame can help in the, for the use case of fast and low overhead stack tracing. We'll also see um, how to generate stack trace information. And hopefully I can also show you how easy it is to uh, stack trace using the S-Frame um, stack trace format. We'll also talk about some current and future work that we have planned. And if there is anything that jumps out to you or you would like to contribute to, please, we can talk at that time too. So um, stack trace is just simply a list of function calls that are currently active in the thread, right? And we use stack traces for a variety of use cases. We need it for profiling, tracing, debugging tools, and more. And a useful tra stack trace uh, like so, we'll show you uh, call chain IPs and some symbols associated with it. Now, symbolization is this, pro this process of symbolization is what makes it human readable and may bring in just not just, funct not just function or symbol names, but also maybe file names and line number and so on. But the thing I wanted to point out here is that in today's talk, we won't get into the aspects of symbolization. We only talk about call chain IPs and how to generate them using um, S frame. Um, so what are the methods of generating called um, uh, stack traces? Well, so the short answer is it depends. There are tools out there like a debugger will do it differently than a profiler because they're just different use cases. They have their own restrictions on what is the real, you know, what is the overhead that they can sustain. Um, this, uh, the list might be larger than this, but I think this is this mainly, this, this covers uh, the various methods that we have so far for stack tracing. And for the context of the talk today, I think it's uh, useful if we get into the three of these methods, uh, frame pointer method, EH frame, and then application specific formats. Uh, this is just so that I can set up enough context to then talk about um, S frame format. So the first method is the frame pointer method, right? This is perhaps one of the oldest um, methods for stack tracing. And in this method, what you do is um, the ABI reserves a register and um, and the program and the compiler generates additional instructions using which the program will save the top of the stack as you enter the function, well, and also restore as you exit the function. But so for example, in case of uh, x86, the register is RBP, and you will see additional instructions in your program, which are the prologue and epilogue, uh, using which the program will uh, save and restore these instructions. So there is an overhead with this method, which is in terms of these additional instructions, and also in terms of ha the compiler having to, um, you know, keep this register for nothing else but stack walking. So there is a performance overhead to this um, method, and this has been one of the biggest complaints of uh, this, the frame pointer based method. The positives on the positive side, however, this method is really it's it's beautiful. I mean, it just works, and it's so simple and easy to understand. Um, so there are many good things about it, but the cons are mainly that there is a performance impact. And the second thing, I don't know if it's so much of a prob problem in practice, but it seems like it's not. But it is not fully asynchronous. There are a few instructions in these few instructions in your prologue and epilogue. Um, it's not fully asynchronous, as in if you try to stack walk back from these instructions, it's not going to be fully precise. Moving on, the second method that is widely also used in some cases is the EHFrame based method. Now, EHFrame is a dwarf based method, and it's not just a stack trace method, it's an unwind method. By that, what I mean is unwinding is not just, um, unwinding means stack tracing and also being able to restore the registers at each of these points. So each frame is really more than just a stack trace format. And this information is present in, um, in the binaries as .ehframe and ehframe header sections. 
um, the format itself is quite compact. It's it's versatile. It works across languages, platforms, and it's it's it works well in practice. Uh, there is good library support with it. If you are a user application, you want to use eh frame based stack walking you can pull in these libraries and it's it, it's good there's good library support the information is uh, well off band so you can you don't have to compile your applications with um f nomad frame pointer but the biggest concern with eh frame based method has been that um the stack tracer the stack tracer itself is slow and it is complex and why so so in eh frame based method what you what the the what is encoded in these sections is basically the instructions to recover the stack offsets so you would you would need to so some of these opcodes are simple some complex but you will need to implement a sort of a stack machine where you can execute these opcodes and figure out the stack offsets and unwind using that so this whole aspect of having to uh, execute opcodes is what makes unwinding slow um, at the time of stack tracing, it's not just the, it's not just this. There are other aspects to 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 um, dwarf that make it slower. But by and large, this is the biggest complaint with EH frame based uh, stack tracing methods that these are slow and the unwinder itself is becoming more complex for for you know applications to handle. And this is um, one of the reasons why it's not the preferred method even in case of uh, kernel stack space uh, stack unwinding. There is, um, yeah, this uh, Fedora 37 accepted proposal now gathered a lot of attention from various folks in the community, and it's interesting to read um, what we have so far talked about frame pointer and EH frame. There's some discussion there too. So, and then moving on, so there are also solutions out there which are application specific formats, right? And it's not just one, there is one that we know of, which is the kernel or um, stack trace format. There are others out there not open source, but um, you know, but you can see that there are applications out there who are fulfilling their needs by using similar methods. And what they have done is basically come up with their own um, stack trace formats. And um, if you look ac across these applications, one of the common reasons why they have had to implement their own and come up with their own application specific format is that they consider that EH frame based um, stack tracing was coming out too slow and complex for their use case. And the problem with this solution is that now across applications, you have this solution where these unwind formats, which are internal to the application, you know, like uh, ad hoc formats, but they're not generated by the tool chain. So if you are an application, you need to now port your application to multiple platforms so you're now stuck with something that you cannot port it becomes difficult to maintain right so um and so you see now like connecting all these methods together there is bifurcation in the space coming out and and we need to ask why why is why is this happening right so take a step back and let's look again frame pointer method was good it was low overhead but there is a performance impact eh frame based method ha was good it was versatile we could get rid of the additional you know um, we could get we, we did not need to reserve any specific hardware register for stack walking purposes but the unwinder itself came out to be complex with high resource requirements and it wasn't the preferred method of stack tracing especially for profilers and tracing purposes then come all these application specific formats the good thing about that is these are fast formats they are designed specifically for the application information is off band so to speak and but the problem here is this is not generated by the tool chain right there is this effort that is needed to reverse engineer and maintain these tools over time and port these across platforms so this begs the question of so is there a set of requirements which if we fulfill we can cater to the needs of uh, fast and low overhead stack tracing. So the short answer is yes. And now if we connect everything that we just talked about till now, the requirements are these four. Support for asynchronous stack tracing. Asynchronous would just mean that given any PC, you do you can stack walk. Given any PC, you will be able to stack walk. Um, the second being that the stack tracing itself should be low overhead. Stack tracer should not be very complex. And third, it needs to be generated by the tool chain, right? So now I pull an S frame into the context and S frame has been designed with these requirements in mind. 
and um, we have defined and implemented S frame stack trace format in Benutils 2.40. The spec is available in the release documentation. S frame stands for simple frame stack trace format. It encodes the minimal necessary information that you need for stack tracing, which is given any PC, what is the CFA and what is the frame pointer and return address? That's all you need to stack trace. And that is all that is encoded in the simple frame stack trace format. Now, um, yeah, current version is um, version one. The format is defined for two ABIs at this time, AMD64 and AAPCS, the AR64 ABI. Um, the format has support for encoding PLT entries as well. And on the AR64 side, there is support to also encode pointer authentication related constructs. So if the return register is mangled with some signature bits, you have constructs in the format that allow you to encode whether or not the return address is mangled. And if mangled, whether it's key A, key B, and so on. The information appears in a new ELF section called .s frame. And uh, the section itself appears in a segment called PT GNU S frame. Uh, all that you need to do to generate um, S frame is use an assembler 2.40, 2.40 and later, well, in future, any later uh, assembler, and pass a minus G S frame to the assembler. The GNU linker will do the right thing, as in if it sees dot S frame sections in the input um, binaries, then it will combine the S frame section and generate one in the final uh, linked artifact. Binutils, uh, read elf and obj dump, the other binary utilities also have support, so you can specify minus minus S frame and get a human readable um, text output to it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry if I said the, said it the other way around. So the question here was: the linker already so does the linker already support linking S frame sections? The answer is yes. Uh, the support is in GNU um, bin utils 2.40, and the linker just does the right thing there. It combines without any additional arguments. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so now let's start to get a little bit into how is it that the information is laid out in the S frame section. It's really simple. There is no, uh, you know, complexity to it. Uh, so first, from a high level view, there are only three components to S frame section: the S frame header, the S frame function descriptor entries, and the S frame uh, frame row entries. The S frame header contains a magic number, a version number, and some offsets. These two offsets that you see on the right side, the arrows, they point to the two subsections in the S frame uh, section. The first subsection of interest is the S frame function descriptor entries. The second subsection of interest is the S frame frame row entries. We will get into what these mean, but I think the takeaway from this slide that I would like to have is um, just one that all of these FDEs, you see FDE is the function descriptor entry. They are all together in a subsection and all the FREs go together in a subsection here. The FDEs are fixed length entries. These are basically some information per function. And if you keep these length entries fixed length, that it allows you to do binary sort, quick uh, binary search um, and find your uh, F the relevant FDE per PC. So that's the reason the FDE section, FDEs are fixed length entries and FREs. Then for size optimizations, we kept them um, variable length. So yeah, only the thing to take away here is information access in S frame is via offsets, and FDEs are clubbed together and FREs are clubbed together. To represent stack trace information for a function, you need one FDE, the function descriptor entry, and n number of frame row entries. The number of frame row entries is something that depends on your function, how the function has been laid out, how is it that it uses the stack. So now let's go in further and see what is an FDE, what, what information does it contain? Again, very simple. It just contains the function start PC. What is the function size in bytes? What kind of code block is it representing? Is it, is it a regular code block or is it a PLT entry? The reason being that the you know, start PCs are are, should be considered differently if it is PLTN. It's more like a pattern, ma pattern thing, masking thing for PLT entries for regular. The unwinder needs to handle it differently. 
Um, then there is an offset to FRE. So remember this diagram here? Um, FREs for that function are appearing later in that section at a specific offset. So FDE tells you what is that offset so that you can easily go uh, retrieve them. The last thing is the number and type of FREs, and we will talk about the type of FREs right now. So FREs is basically the, it's the backbone. It's the backbone of the uh, S-frame stack trace section. And all it tells you is that um, given a PC, what are the stack offsets to recover the CFA, FP, and RA? And that's about it. So FRE contains um, the start IP offset. So if you know the start, start of the function, all you have to encode is at what offset into the function does this um, uh, stack trace information hold valid. Uh, so as you can see, the function sizes may be different, so you don't need as many bytes to encode the start IP offset. And this is one space saving optimization that you have that now you can, now you, basically in S-frame format, you have three different kind of FRE representations, and you can use one over the other depending on what is the size of that function. And the last thing is, yeah, just uh, the number and size of stack frame offsets are encoded right there in um, towards the trailing part of FRE. So now at this point, we have talked about what is what information is contained in S frame and what does it look like? Now, I thought for the audience here, it might be better to take a rather again higher level ground and ask um, so what is it about this format that makes it so effective? We talked about some features, but to sort of tie it in, tie it up all together, let's see from the perspective of what is it that makes it effective, right? So the first thing in the right direction that I think is, uh, that is generated by the tool chain. Uh, and that helps a lot in the sense that you can now use this format and this can be easily generated for your favorite um, applications. Um, the second thing, is going in the direction of, since this has been designed for those requirements in mind, it is effective. And again, it's like, um, so, uh, let's take three key features that we can discuss and then bring home the point that this, this, this format uh, is effective for the use case of fast and uh, low overhead stack tracing. So the first thing is um, that these FDEs are sorted. They're sorted on the start PC of the function. Now, most stack trace formats will do that, and they must do that because you want to look up information in a quick way. So this allows them to do binary search, and this is similar uh, for similar reasoning. It's also done in um, S frame. Uh, since the FDEs are sorted on start PC, it helps you to quickly find the stack trace uh, data for the PC, um, and um, the FDEs that hold the FDEs hold the offset to where the corresponding start FREs are, yeah. So that's one thing. So it allows fast lookup of information. The second uh, is the FREs, right? The stack offsets are encoded directly into the format. There is no business of executing more opcodes to, to then generate the stack traces. And this is also, for those of you who know ORC, this is also something that, this is something that ORC also does. The stack offsets are encoded directly. It's just that in S-frame format, there are some space optimizations done, in, uh, done here, so which makes it more compact a representation to put the stack offset. But that's the second feature that gives it its effectiveness. The fact being that the stack offsets are directly encoded. You do not need to do any computation when you are uh, stack walking. The third is also important. I, can, I think compactness is important. And uh, there are a number of uh, space saving optimizations that we have done in the representation of the format. So think of it, um, for, so there are two knobs that, that have been used. One is that the functions can be of varied sizes. And the second is that the functions may use stack differently. Some functions may use more uh, space in the stack, some may use less, of course. So the offsets will need will either need to be large or small. So depending on the function, you can choose what is it that the what is the size of the stack offset that you need to encode. So taking all three things then, well, before we do that, so this is one uh, graph that I have um, we need to take it with some grain of salt as in um, so first what this graph shows you is the ratio of S-frame to the EH-frame sections. 
uh, EH, there are two sections, EH frame, EH frame header. This is for x86, and it's only a limited set. I just, it's not really very representative. These are just some binary um, uh, utilities. <coughs> from the GNU bin utils. And this graph shows the ratio of the S frame to EH frame sections. And on x86, it's it's coming out to somewhere between 80%. Now, EH frame is a totally, you know, it, it's, it caters to a different use case. It has more information in it. So it's not really a fair comparison here to say that S frame is 80% of EH frame. These are two different formats. They, they cater to two different use cases. But I thought it might be good for to satiate your curiosity if you were thinking about how large these sections are. And hopefully this puts it, gives you some perspective to it. Um, so yeah, I think, so at this point we have talked about few key reasons why S-Frame can be effective. And now we'll start getting into, we're switching gears now. So we will now start talking about um, the usability aspect of S-Frame. So there is a library called lib s frame. This is the s, sorry, this is the s frame um, format library. It's shipped with binutils 2.40. It has APIs to read and write s frame data. Now it's been written with uh, BFD and LD in mind, so it has APIs to write s frame data. I don't see why an a stack tracer may need and may need some APIs to write S frame data, but just to cover it all, there are APIs there to read and write S frame data. Uh, there are also some APIs for uh, stack tracing. So, if when you're stack tracing, you would like to find out, given a PC, what is the FRE, and given an FRE, can you give me the stack offset? So, those APIs do exist in this library. Um, going deeper. The S frame, lib S frame APIs. Again, I would like to assert here again that this is flavored for BFD LD use case. So, and it is a young library. So, I at this point, I don't think it's fair to make any guarantees for a stable ABI, but we'll work towards that. Um, the S frame dash API dot H is the user interfacing uh, data structure. You'll find some user interfacing data structures there and the API um, details. Um, at this point, I think it's also valuable if I um, if I um, clarify that S frame sections are unaligned on disk, right? So uh, the lib S frame internally will handle will handle the access to it in a, so that there are no unaligned accesses. But the format itself is unaligned on disk. Um, there are read, write, and find APIs, and if you want to look up um, easily, there are some, they are all prepended with the same string, S frame underscore decode, S frame encode, and then for finding, there is S frame find FRE and um, FRE get offset. So this is some code that maybe can shed some perspective on how easy it is to stack walk. So this shows you how to stack, how to do one stack walk. So given a PC, uh, what you do is you figure out where is it that the S frame was loaded up. Um, you know, you get some uh, offset. And with that offset, you find the FRE. Once you have found the FRE, so this is find FRE. Once you have a handle on the FRE, all you need to do is get the CFA figure out the CFA, then get the RA offset, figure out the RA return address, get the FP offset, and get the FP. And that's it. So you're set up for the next iteration. And if you do this iteratively, there you have all the PCs in your, uh, you know, as you get the return addresses, that's your call chain IP. So it is simple and easy to use. Um, we have tested for both AR64 and um, x 64 at this time. Um, so for future work, there is some work lined up and um, on the assembler side, there is, so the GNU assembler at this, the GNU assembler, the way it, the way it will generate S frame data is it will um, use the CFI directives generated by the compiler and it will, if you specify the minus G S frame flag to the assembler, it will generate the S frame section. Now there is one 
dot CFI directive that is being skipped at this time, which is the CFI escape. The compiler generally generates it, and along with it, it specifies here is an expression when you are generating, you know, it's used in EH frame. So here is an expression to figure out what the stack offsets will be. Now, the S frame machinery at this time hasn't been coded up to. Uh, to work on the CFI escapes, but I will add that. That's one of the things to do. But this means that it is not fully asynchronous because of this. But that being said, the number of times compiler generates CFI escape is really limited. So it, to be fair, I would say it's not fully asynchronous, but it should be really, really close. Assembler side, I should also we should also add some more regression tests. Um, there is ongoing work on that. Um, I think, and by and large, what we plan to do in the next few months and for much of this year is to take on more um, feedback from the community how on how how it, how and where they see use cases of S frame format. Um, if you have some user applications that you would like to use S frame format for, please yeah let us know if. Uh, there can be any collaborations there. For the Linux kernel, there's another, yeah, we thought about the Linux kernel and we've started some um, discussions on how it can be used in the kernel as well. Um, the discussions are ongoing. We did some POC, there are issues with that POC, but what has come out is that there seems to be a general consensus that it will be a good thing to try in the uh, kernel for user space. We, it looks viable so far, and uh, we would move ahead in this direction. And the general idea is to do it generically so that it can be used by many of the, many of the components in the kernel, like perf or um, ftrace and so on, dtrace maybe, and bpf, hopefully. Um, I think that's, uh, we're nearing towards the end of the presentation. Uh, yep, so that was quick. Um, so we talked today about stack tracing, what are the methods of stack tracing and what are the challenges with each of these methods. Uh, we talked about the impact of S-frame format, what it is and so on. If you have questions now, later, get in touch with us at the Binutils mailing list. And yeah, that's all I have. It went by fast. Okay. So what applications are actually using S-Frame format today? Today, well, we have started looking into the user space. Uh, <clears throat> you're doing a user space stack walking in the kernel. So that will be one application of it. But other than that, actively, nothing yet. Okay, but we so would like them to, we would like more tracers and more profilers to make use of it. So the use case is really fast, low overhead. And in theory, It'll be beneficial to all of the stack tracers, all the you know profilers and tracers out there. So, so mm -hmm. sorry, are you are you working on uh, converting some app, user space applications to to use it now, or are you are just getting the word out so uh, other applications will start using it? So we started working on the user space for the kernel, but the intent is also to go ahead and find out more of these applications where S frame can be directly used. Yes. At this time, short answer is we started looking in the kernel, but the others are something to think about for us, yes. So I don't know a lot about stack tracing, but I do use tools that obviously benefit from it. Um, I do a lot of multi-threaded parallel programming, and I'm curious whether S-Frame or other uh, approaches are better or worse at doing stack traces across threads, like not just within, this is what this thread did, but it came out of this frame in this other thread or things like that. I think it's orthogonal to which of these um, formats you use, even if it is multi-threaded, yeah, it, it, it should just work depending on how you handle, how you handle the stack across processes or threads, you just have to make sure that there is no uh, collision there, but format-wise, this, this, this should just work, yeah. Okay. And I also had one just uh, clarifying question. You used the term asynchronous a few times in your talk, and um, 
like early in the talk, you talked about it being a problem with uh, the first approach, I think. It was never clear to me what asynchronous meant in this context. Could you clarify that? Yes. So asynchronous means that given any PC, you're able to stack walk precisely. Right, so the, the, this is generally, generally a problem with stack traces, as in even if they're imprecise, they are considered, sometimes they're good enough for an application, sometimes not. But when I'm talking about asynchronous, I rather mean that given any PC, I want to be able to generate a stack trace precisely. So in case of frame pointer, so when you enter the, in case of frame pointer, what the compiler has done for you is added few instructions in the prologue and a instruction in the epilogue in case of x86, right? So the first instruction I believe is um, what it does is it saves, it saves RBP on stack. So you'll have a push to the stack and then, or is it the other way around? But either way, so the, the RBP has not been saved yet. Yeah, so you should first save and then, uh, you know, update the RBP. So when you are in those instructions, the RBP is not yet correct, right? So if you, uh, if you stack walk from that PC, you will miss some part of your stack trace. So that's what I meant by asynchronous. Um, so frame, frame pointer based approach is not asynchronous because if ever it happens that you are that if, because these are asynchronous, well, asynchronous now being the request to stack walk, right? This may come in at any point, and if your application is at that PC, then you may have, you will have imprecise stack trace. And uh, does that answer? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Uh, I had a similar question, probably like a follow-up. So the the S frame, I understand it's a kind of like a tracing format, but is there a similar tracing format type prior to this, or was it that I, I, I'm just not familiar with the current situation about tracing? Was it like every tracing application uses its own format and you want to unify it, or? So tracing applications, well, I believe if I look back now and, you know, gather my thoughts, most tracing for most of the trace, so there are two, uh, there are two components to your question. What are the are there other formats apart from stack trace? The short answer is yes, Laun. You, if you look at EH frame, it can be used for stack tracing. Although it's an unwind format, unwinding means that as you're stack walking, you are also restoring the register state, right? But you can use EH frame for just plain vanilla stack walking. So it is also a format for stack walking. Now there are also application specific formats like ORC exists, which solves the problem for kernel space stack walking, right? And now S frame. So yes, there are, and there are more formats, which I have not talked about. There are more formats than S frame that, um, uh, that try to solve the stack walking problem, but S frame is the only one at this time that seems to be doing it in more or less, um, while more or less fulfilling the requirements, right? So we talked about those requirements of fast. What, what are the requirements to do fast, low overhead stack tracing? So I think that's the first part of your question. And the second was, could you repeat? Um, oh, my second question is probably, um, is it like for all those different types of, are they like for each of those formats, is it being used by multiple tracing tools already or it's just like a, each of its, like a tracing tool use each of its own format and you want to it, have a new format to unify that? It's mostly each tracing tool is free to use their own format, but I think in practice, many of them are still using frame pointer or maybe even EH frame. I'm not sure. There are just a number of tracing tools out there because if you're pulling in, um, yeah, lib unwind and lib DW, you're using EH frame in those cases. Right. And Thank it really depends on the tracer. I don't know if tracers do it out there that they can detect that, you know, I would rather be, these applications are using EH frame, so you specify while using the tracer that just use EH frame because, that just use frame pointer because I know the application has been compiled with um, frame pointer enabled. I saw you mentioned uh, the uh, frame 
uh, it's designed for x86, and uh, I guess you also mentioned the PowerPC uh, uh, ARM, right? The architecture. Uh, if I, I may be wrong, I, if, I, if I recall com, uh, correctly, uh, RISC, RISC-V, the a, function ABI is a little different uh, from x86. Yes. Um, have you uh, um, consider if you apply this to risk five, we will have the same solution or the solution will be a little different? risk five, I'm not really sure of the API, but ARM64 is different from this. ARM64, the ABI, well, ARM64 also has a link register. So in, this is really x86 related, you know, the, the picture here is for x86, but ARM64 has a different ABI, yes. Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. both frame pointer and link register, right? So. Uh, Every call instruction will make when you ex when in ARM 64 ABI, the co the call instruction will save the return register and the link register. But even then, the problem remains that as you are going as you see these instructions, you don't know whether to use the LR or whether to use the FP. So there is still some reliance on an additional information somewhere. It could be EH frame, it could be S frame. You still need to rely on per PC issue. Is it the LR that I need or is it the FP that I need? Right? That's the e, that's the ARM64 ABI. For risk five, I'm sorry, I I, I don't know too much about that API ABI at this time. I recall it's a little different hmm. than x86. Yeah. So, but I guess the, maybe the basic idea is similar. You need the PC first and, and uh, the frame pointers. Mm -hmm. and so, the, so long as the return register, so, so, so long as the return address is at a defined location, either it's stack or it's a fixed PC, right? So in ARM64, it's a fixed PC. It is LR. If it is not LR, it's stashed away on stack. In x86, the return register is always on stack, right? So it's a defined location. For these kind of ABIs, you can use S-Frame. But if there is an ABI out there where the return register can be anything, anything as in any, any, from any of these registers, then S-Frame format cannot be used as is. Because in S-Frame format, you don't encode the register number to say that this is the register that will be used for return address. So you, so for those other ABIs, uh, you will need format extensions. At this time, it works for MD64, AR64, and, and it can also be made, work, made to work for other ABIs where the return address is more or less, um, yeah, in a defined location and a fixed register. It may still need format, it may still need some extensions as in we'll need to take a look at the ABI and just make sure everything still works. But I don't expect major revamp for those sort of ABIs. For the other ABIs where the return register can be anywhere, I think there will be problems with this format, yeah, because then that's just, it just bloats up. Now you have to all of a sudden re be able to restore any register, right? So right now I have three offsets, CFA, FP, and RA. Now, if the return register can be any register, then it just really bloats up the format. And I don't know if we really want to get there. Oh uh, yeah, with this format. Okay. I have a question myself. Um, um, ORC is one of those application specific uh, formats, right? And um, could you clarify what is the relationship between S-Frame and ORC? And in particular, why the kernel would need something like S-Frame to unwind the user land stacks? And why it could not use its own application-specific format for that? So, ORC is application-specific, yes. And it has been designed for uh, kernel stack traces. Now, kernel has this, um, kernel has not just C code, but also inline assembly and handwritten assembly. So, and there are some constructs in there which are, I would say, non-standard stack usage. But per, but uh, ORC still has representation for all of that. So it can represent everything that the kernel is currently doing. And for user space, can you use it? Um, I think there will be issues. As far as I remember, there is a struct where the function start address can only be um, 16 bits or so. So it will need changes for it to be used 
out of the box for user space. Um, you could do versioning of the format and move to that, but I haven't looked very closely. This is one of the things that I remember from um, having looked at it last time. Um, yeah, I mean, in theory, it is in it, 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 as ORC is ORC is doing similar things. The stack offsets are directly encoded. It wants to do stack, uh, you know, it, it wants to do fast uh, stack tracing. So there are two sections. I believe they also do some um, sorting of these IPs so you can look information clearly. So it's similar principles, but it will need changes for you to use it in user space. Okay, so basically S-Frame is not to, to replace ORC in the kernel, but to complement it yes, to unwind you, user land stacks, right? For user land stacks, yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you.